Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Backyard Biology, where ecological encounters are closer than you may think. If you guys don't know me, my name's Joel, and I am the kids lead at Sandals Church, Palm Avenue. But when we're out exploring our backyards like we are today, you can just call me Mantis, because that's my explorer name. But anyways, Welcome to another episode. I'm so glad that you are all here with us right now. And I have some exciting things to show you this this morning in our backyard. And remember, friends, I have been spending my entire life trying to find the miniature blue giraffe. And just based off the last two times we filmed, it seems like this blue giraffe always seems to show up right when we look at our third species of the day. And so maybe if you guys can keep an eye out on it. I saw it in, a, in some grass the other day. I saw it on the ground the other I don't know where this blue giraffe could be. But keep an eye out. Please type in if you see my blue giraffe because be, it would mean so much to me. All right, friends. So the last last week, if you guys were here, we talked about food chains, which is basically the way that organisms get their energy. And so these next couple weeks, I thought it would be really cool if we could go into some of those levels of a food chain more specifically. So today, we're going to be talking about the bottom of the food chain or the producers. Can you guys say producers that's our ecological concept of the day producers now you might be wondering mantis what's a producer now a producer is an organism that just needs the water just needs water and the sun to survive now producers are what you call an autotroph and if you look at the two words, auto and troph, auto means self and troph means nourishment. And so if a producer is an autotroph, that means that it self nourishes. It doesn't need to eat anything. It makes its own food, essentially. And I'm not talking about that peanut butter and jelly sandwich you made yesterday. That's, that's completely different. That's not the same. But... Producers, they make their own energy from the from uh, the sun and from water, and that's the way that they make their energy. So we're going to look at some common producers that you might see in your backyard. But you might be wondering, Mantis, I already know what the most common producer is. And it's a plant. And I would say, correct a mundo, because it is a plant. That is the most popular producer. But... Did you also know that in the ocean, phytoplankton and cyanobacteria are also producers? Hmm, those aren't quite plants, but they are producers. But too bad my backyard isn't in the ocean because then I could show you guys that. But in this case, we're just gonna have to show you some really cool plants that are in my backyard. And so let's go start our journey as we look through the different types of producers that we can maybe find in your backyard. And it's one of the first things that I'm sure that at least you, if you don't have it in your backyard, you have seen it before. And it's actually, it's the very thing I'm walking on. It's grass. Now grass, look at, oh, you see all that beautiful grass? Yes, grass is our first producer that we're going to be looking at today because I know you guys have at least seen grass before, right? Anyways, so the cool things about grass, and you might be thinking grasses all look the same. Well, there's actually over 10,000 different types of grass. There's rice, there's wheat, there's other things, and there's even our backyard grass. And typically, oh, in your backyard, you'll even you'll have a mixture of Kentucky bluegrass, fine fescue, 
perennial ryegrass and other things, but it's a mix of those things. And those, those types of grass are, call, are attracted to cool types of grass. Not cool as in like, oh, I got my sunglasses on and I'm super cool. No, like cool as in temperature as opposed to warm because the grasses that are, at least where I live in Riverside, the grass uh, needs to be able to withstand a lot of different temperature changes because I don't know about you guys, but it gets kind of hot out here in Riverside at times and sometimes it'll be hot and then sometimes it'll be really cold and the cool resistant grass needs to be able to adjust to all the different kinds of temperatures that we may get. So that's why we have those that's why we have those types of grass in our backyard. And fun fact, if you ever are getting really hot, maybe you should look at your lawn and if it's healthy, if it's all green because grass actually takes the light from the sun and the heat and splits it across the yard so that the ground itself doesn't really get so hot. And if the ground around your house isn't that hot, then your house isn't that hot. So something to think about. Maybe you should help your parents with that yard work. Who knows? They might appreciate it too. But anyways, we're gonna go look at another producer and friends. I'm excited. I know this show is called Backyard Biology, but I thought it would be really cool. Oh, wait, no, not yet. There's something I forgot. Oh, I was about to show you my front yard, but I forgot. There's something else I wanted to show you first in the backyard, but so the next thing that we're gonna talk about, and I know you guys all think this is really pretty, are flowers. And you might think, there's so many flowers, there's so many plants, I love those flower, those flowers. But actually, did you know that flowers aren't really a plant? Flowers are a part of a bigger plant called an angiosperm. Can you guys say angiosperm? So essentially, an angiosperm is basically a plant that flowers. So a flowering plant is what an angiosperm is. And I know that you guys are thinking, there's so many different types of flowers in my backyard that I've seen at school, I've seen out in the world, there's so many different flowers. But did you know that all of them have essentially the same four parts? And I'm gonna show you a flower, where did I put it? Oh, I think it's right here. So this is a flower that I found on this tree right here. And I don't know if you guys can see this flower, but there's four main parts to the flower. So you guys might see there's a sepal, and that's that little green thing on the underside of the flower. Then there's the petals, the pretty part that we have right here, this pink part. And I don't know if you guys can see those little uh, stringy things with the yellow dots on top. Those are called stamen. And this tall part, I don't know if you see the tall, the tall red part that's kind of at the top that's not yellow might be a little blurry but that's actually called the pistol and all of those things are in a plant are in every single flower the cool thing about flowers is that all those four parts are just different I know I'm holding up three fingers but four in spirit because I'm holding this flower four and so the sepal I want you guys to think of a flower kind of like a house so the the pistol right here is kind of like the mommy in the house. So this is actually the female part of the house. And then these little guys, the ones with the yellow heads, remember what those are called? The stay men? Those are actually the, the man of the house, the daddy of the house. And these pretty petals are there to protect the mommy and daddy. It's kind of like the, uh, the structure, the infrastructure of your house. Those are the petals. That's the, that's the really pretty part of the flowers. And then there's the sepals, which is the underside. I don't know if you guys can see that. I hope you can. But those, if you can think of a flower, when it buds, it's kind of encapsulated in some green. And those are the sepals. It protects the bud of the flower. 
so that it's protected and it doesn't get eaten by anything, that it doesn't get damaged by the elements, by weather. But I'm really excited to show you a special type of flower and I'm gonna take you into my front yard. Ooh, I know this is backyard biology, but today we're going in the front yard as well because I have something really pretty to show you. Oh, here we go. Look at all these flowers that are right here. So these flowers are actually roses. Now, you guys can see. Look, so we have our petals right here. They're white. We have our sepals right here that are green. So the cool thing about roses is, did you know that roses actually are only supposed to have six petals? Yes. So, and you might be wondering, Mantis, I see so many, I see so many petals. There's one, two, three, there's like at least 20 petals on here. So roses are actually genetically modified so that you can see um, the prettier version of roses in a sense. So, you know, the stamen, those like wiggle, those tall, uh, little stringy things with the yellow dot on top of them. Those are the stamens. So they, act, so scientists have actually genetically modified those stamen so that there's more petals because a lot of, a lot of, uh, people really like that flowers have so many petals and the flat, the petals of the flower are typically the more beautiful part, uh, in perspective uh, of the flower. Close the gate. But that's why they're modified so that people will buy more roses. Isn't that kind of crazy? I thought flowers are pretty enough. But anyways, all right. But we have our last species that I'm gonna show you. And so we've seen grasses, we've seen flowers. The last thing, and it's a pretty big thing, we have trees. We have trees. Do you see how tall this tree is? Wow. I know you guys have probably seen a tree before. <laughs> do you guys, do you guys smell that? It kind of smells like the blue giraffe is near. Huh, I don't. I smell him, but I, I just don't, huh, I don't, I don't see him anywhere. Well, okay, well maybe next time, just let me know if you see him or type in or I, I don't know, I don't, I, I just wanna see this blue giraffe. But anyways, we have trees, but we're gonna look at trees. And you might be thinking that we were talking about angiosperms before, but there's also another type of plant and it's called a gymnosperm. Can you guys say gymnosperm? So a gymnosperm is basically a plant that doesn't flower or it has cones. And I want you to see, I'm standing under a pine tree right now and I wanna show you what a little pine looks like. I don't know if you guys can see that, but do you guys see the little brown part right there? So that's a cone. And so that means that this tree is a gymnosperm. So anytime that you see a tree with a cone, so like pine trees, cedar trees, those are gymnosperm. And if you see a plant or a tree with a flower or even a fruit, those are angiosperms. And trees are so important to our life today because if you guys know, we breathe in oxygen to live and breathe out carbon dioxide to get it out of our system. But plants actually do the opposite. And trees like this one are one of the big reasons uh, that we have oxygen today because they do the opposite of us. So they breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen for us to take in. So it's kind of like, if you think about it, if I start talking to this tree right here, it's almost like it's good for us and it could be good for him if I talk to him. I don't know if that's scientifically proven, but maybe you should talk to your plants, talk to your trees and thank them 
for all the things that they were doing. And trees are super special, guys. Anytime you see any tree uh, or any plant that looks woody, and so that's kind of like what this bark is right here, or a perennial tree, and a perennial means that it lasts for a long time, as opposed for annual, which only lasts for about a year, because certain plants only last for a short time. Trees last for a long time. That's why they're called perennials. So friends, that's all the producers that I have today. And it's so cool because at the bottom of the food chain, there's so many different types of producers. There's, the, there's trees and there's a ton of those. There's different types of flowers, different types of grasses, different types of even shrubs or ferns that we didn't talk about today. And so I would love for you to show me what's in your backyard. What type of producers do you have in your backyard? Because, you know, your backyard produces something and my backyard produces something and they could be completely different so i would love just like last week if i don't know if some of you were able to post a picture of your food chain that you found in your backyard but i would love if you could draw some producers or plants that you see in your backyard and tell your parents to post it on their social media and make sure to at sandals kids and to hashtag Sandals Church Kids Art because I would love to see the types of producers that are in your backyard. And don't worry, if you don't know what type of producer it is, just draw it anyways. Draw it to the best of your abilities. Maybe if you post it, I can maybe look at it and I can help you figure out what type of producer it is. That would be so much fun. But anyways, friends, that's it for this episode of Backyard Biology. And remember, ecological encounters are closer than you may think. Go find some producers, friends. Goodbye.